Good evening and welcome to another session of Behind the Songs with Pastor Craig Smith and myself. I'm Daniel Simons. We are, as usual, excited to be with you tonight as we discuss the music that we do as worship here at First Baptist Church. We had a, an amazing set this past Sunday, uh, some of my old favorites, and uh, we even got a glimpse into this new Christmas season uh, with part of the set. So. We did. Even the decorations were a little bit more Christmassy yeah. uh, as you came in. Uh, those of you that were live, or if you watched online, you saw Christ may have seen some of the Christmas decorations around the church. Uh, and there'll be even more as the, the season continues. We even started off the service. Uh, we Every year at Christmas time, we have a Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Mm -hmm. So we had a video talking about that. 100% of that offering goes to support missionaries on the foreign fields all over the world. Uh, and so we have, we'll be taking up offering. Our goal is 15000 This is the 175th year of the Southern Baptist Convention. So they have a goal of $175 million wow. for the uh, uh, Lottie Moon Christmas offering for the International Mission Board. So we encourage you to pray and see what God would have you to give uh, to that offering. And just as a reminder, the, the Lottie Moon Christmas offering makes up a majority of the budget for the IMB. Yes. They do, you know, our cooperative giving does go towards the IMB or can contribute to it, but a majority of their funding does come from the Lottie Moon Christmas That's offering. True. So, you know, we do encourage, as part of this uh, season of giving, which, by the way, hashtag Giving Tuesday is tomorrow, uh, we ask that you would consider giving towards First Baptist Church and the ministries that we support, such as the IMB, uh, mm -hmm. during this giving season. Absolutely. Um, so, anyway. Right. Yeah. All right, we're coming to the end of the year. It's just uh, upon us very soon. Yeah. Uh, and we've been reading through the New Testament. I uh, hope many of you have joined us as we read through. We started back at the beginning of the year. We're almost finished. In fact, this week we should finish up Revelation. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, reading through the New Testament, we're also challenging people to start in 1st of December and reading through Luke uh, each the day of the week. And then by the end, by Christmas Day, you'll read through the life of Christ right, right before Christmas. We're almost finished. Some of the passages in Revelation have been a little more difficult as you struggle through the bowl judgments and the trumpet judgments and the seals and, and all that. It's a little difficult to understand sometimes. But it's getting to the very end, and this Tuesday kind of turns the corner and starts talking about heaven and about how Christ is going to wipe away all, every tear from our eyes. Right. And we'll walk on golden streets and gates of pearl, and, and it gets really fun. And that, that's the next to the last chapter of Revelation. So hope you, you'll tune into it. This first song even alludes to it in, in some of the uh, choruses there. It, it, it talks about that. But we started off on It's a Happy Day. The mm -hmm. day that Jesus Christ came into our life, saved us. The day that Jesus rose from the dead. What a happy, glorious day it has been. We just finished Thanksgiving week and uh, all the many things that we're thankful for, uh, not the least of which is the death and burial resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So the, the happy day song starts off with the greatest day in history. Death is beaten. You have rescued me. Sing it out. Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out. Jesus is alive. He's alive. Oh, happy day. Happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day. Happy day. I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. When I stand at that place, free at last, meeting face to face, I am yours, Jesus. You are mine. Endless joy and perfect peace, earthly pain finally will cease. Celebrate. Jesus is alive. He's alive. Oh, happy day, happy day, you washed my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. Oh, what a glorious day, what a glorious way that you have saved me. Oh, what a glorious day, what a glorious name. Wow, what a happy day that we can celebrate our uh, salvation through Jesus Christ. Indeed, what a happy day. You know, we... As believers in Christ, we have the promise that we can look forward to, that, that eternity with Christ in the presence of our righteous and holy God. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that truly will be a happy day. And, and, what, and another portion of that promise is, like you said, Jesus has wiped away the tears. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to worry about the pains and troubles of this world anymore. And we will be joyful in the mm -hmm. presence of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
And there's no greater joy than knowing that you are a child of the King. That's During right. this Advent or Christmas season, we're reminded of the birthplace of our salvation, a stable in Bethlehem where Jesus came as a baby to save the world. The joy of our salvation came to this earth so that we might have life abundant. As we begin the Christmas season, uh, we started off with our first Christmas carol of Joy to the World, which is probably, or maybe next to Silent Night, maybe the most famous uh, Christmas carol. But I wanted to read some as I was studying about Joy to the World from a book, Stories of Christmas Carols, by Ernest, and I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, uh, E-M-U-R-I-A-N. I'll attempt it, Emurian. Em Something like that. Yeah. Ernest. <laughs> Ernest wrote... Uh, so Ernest wrote this. <laughs> the book, and it, it's uh, Stories of Christmas Carols. And I was reading about Joy of the World, and there's several things in here that I found very uh, interesting that I wanted to, to point out. Uh, first of all, you know, many people are familiar with worship wars mm. that have gone on in, in uh, churches for years. And it's not something new. And by worship wars, I'm referring to uh, a lot of times the younger generation doesn't necessarily like the music of the older generation. And you can extrapolate from that, but, but that's kind of a, in a synopsis. Right. Uh, well, that's nothing new. Right. In fact, the, the writing of this hymn, uh, Carol, uh, Joy to the World, uh, can kind of relate to that. Because Isaac Watt, who back in the uh, late 1600s, was a teenager. <laughs> and as he would come to church, his dad was a deacon in the church. And as he would come to church, he didn't like the music at the church. It was very, uh, almost like a Gregorian chant, uh, very mundane and dark and, and uh, old-fashioned. And he would complain and complain about the music much like a lot of teenagers nowadays do <laughs> complain about. But in, in the late 1600s, when Isaac Watt was 18 years old, his, uh, his dad, as I said, was a deacon, and he, uh, Isaac dared to criticize and complain. And I'm going to read part of what, what uh, they said here. He said he complained uh, only to hear his father reply with the well-worn argument of all elders to upstart use. Those hymns were good enough for your grandfather and your father's son, and they will have to be good enough for you. <laughs> Heard that before. Undaunted, Isaac, encouraged by his brother Enoch, came back with this statement. They will never do for me, Father, regardless of what you say and your father thought of them. Then the angry senior, Mr. Watts, shouted, If you don't like the hymns we sing, then write better ones. To which the brilliant Isaac replied, I have written better ones, Father, and if you'll relax and listen, I will read one for you. When his father finally quieted down, the lad picked up a piece of paper and read aloud his first hymn based on Revelation 5, 6 through 10. Behold the glories of the Lamb amidst his father's throne. Prepare new honors for his name and songs as yet unknown. The amazed deacon, dad, took a copy of his son's hymn to church the following Sunday morning where it was lined out to the congregation. It was so well received that young Isaac was requested to prepare another new hymn for the next Sunday and then another for the next Sunday, and another for the next Sunday, and another for the next Sunday. He continued to write a new hymn for 222 consecutive Sundays. Wow. He wrote a new hymn every week for 222 uh, consecutive Sundays, single-handedly revolutionizing the congregational singing habits of the English church. So the hymnals became Isaac Watts, uh, predominantly. There were others, but, but he revolutionized, as it said, the, the hymns. But there was another, uh, he ended up writing over 600 hymns uh, before he passed away. But there's another story here I wanted to, to relate to you as well. Even after Isaac Watts passed away, uh, after he died in, in the late 18, or 1700s, around 1780, the American Revolutionary War was going on. Mm -hmm. And a detachment from British forces had sailed forth from their Staten Island headquarters and burned the nearby town of Elizabeth, New Jersey, in what became known as the Battle of Springfield. Later, a few weeks after that, George Washington's militia was on the ground, all lined up to give battle to the British troops. Suddenly, the defenders discovered that there was a tragic shortage of wadding that they used in the guns. Right. That time. When Reverend 
Mr. Caldwell heard the news. He rushed back to his church. He picked up an armful of hymnals, which was basically Isaac Watts' writings. Most of the hymnals then was, was his hymns. He hurried to the scene of the impending battle, handing the hymnals to the fighters up and down the line. He cried out, Give them Watts, boys! Give them Watts! The desperate soldiers tore out the pages of the hymnal, wadded their guns, and gave the enemy what the chaplain had commanded. So they ended up winning that battle. They didn't have the wadding for their guns. They used Watts' <laughs> songs yeah. from, from the hymnal. Uh, but since that day, many an individual battle has been won as Christians have taken up the great hymns of the faith and given the devil Watts when sorely pressed by the evil one. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, in poetry as well as in prose, has never failed to destroy the enemy. Wow. thought that was an interesting yeah. use of the hymnal. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was necessary at the time. But So the, the song, Joy to the World, familiar to all of you, uh, but just like Isaac Watts in the late 1600s took the text from Revelation, put a modern twist to it, and made it to what we sing now, along with... Uh, George Handel adding the music later to, uh, to Joy to the World. In the same way, in recent years, uh, maybe five or six years ago now, uh, uh, Chris Tomlin took Joy to the World and added a chorus to it that we sang on this past Sunday, uh, Unspeakable Joy. Just added a little chorus, used the same Joy to the World that we've sung for hundreds of years and added a little chorus to it. So just like the... Uh, uh, Isaac wanted to put a new young twist back mm -hmm. in the 17, 1600s. Uh, Chris Tomlin wanted to put a younger twist on it now in, in the 2000s. And, and I think uh, Watts, you know, if he was, if we could interview him, and one day we might be able to mm -hmm. in heaven, you know, we mm -hmm. would uh, we would ask, him, hey, so what do you think? Uh, were you offended whenever we did this? <laughs> well, son, is it about Jesus? Well, yes. No, That's I'm right. not offended. That's right. Uh, That's right. Yeah. And it's encouraging even more people to sing this song. Absolutely. So very familiar words, but here we go. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. Heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of its righteousness, wonders of its love and wonders of its love, wonders and wonders of its love. And in the chorus that Chris Tomlin added, joy, unspeakable joy, an overwhelming, uh, um, overflowing well, no tongue can tell. Joy, unspeakable joy, it rises in my soul and it never lets me go. Joy to the world. And, and our joy, sometimes that joy is so powerful. You know, it, it, I think unspeakable is a good way to define it. We are so filled with joy that we cannot describe it. We cannot uh, give it verbal utterance. But it, it is that great joy that we can only find in Christ Jesus. Amen. So at this Christmas time, we have the great joy of singing and, and proclaiming the news of the birth of of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The next song we sing is Your Name. It's a song that we sing throughout the year, but this particular version has Christmas words to it. They mm -hmm. change the words just a little bit to have more of a Christmas feel to it. But uh, the name of Jesus, or Yahshua, was a very common name back in first century Palestine. You would have heard it frequently. Um, but those times, the name of Jesus, your name, whatever your name was, it meant something more than right. Craig or Daniel necessarily means today. It, it had a meaning, and you were expected to live up to your name, whatever your meaning of your name was. Well, no one's quite lived up to their name like Jesus or Yeshua. Right. Not only did he live up to his name, he embodied his name, which means God is salvation. We, Before we sang this on Sunday... I had two different scriptures that, that came up on the screen. One that says, She will give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Mm. Directly from the Christmas story. 
And then the next verse is what comes from Acts. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The name of Jesus. That's right. So your name is sung frequently, as I said, but the, the with the Christmas words, and the Christmas words go like this. Humbly to the earth you came, born into this world to save. God with us, Emmanuel, now we adore your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nations sing it louder, because nothing has the power to save but your name. Jesus, in your name we pray. Come and fill our hearts today. Lord, give us strength to live for you and glorify your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nations sing it louder, because nothing has the power to save but your name. What? Jesus. That's right. No other name. It is Jesus' name alone. And it is, I love that passage. Salvation is found in no one else. And there is no other name under heaven given, by, given to mankind by which we must be saved. What a powerful, powerful statement to remember. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So after that, we had one of our newest members, Faye Russell, uh, sing a solo, uh, Be Still My Soul and What a Friend. And then Pastor Steve brought the message and then the invitation song that we've sung before. But uh, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot, to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come. And once again, just like on Joy of the World, Mm -hmm. someone's added a new chorus. Uh, I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I welcome home with open arms. Praise God, just as I am. Just as we are. Just as we are. We come, uh, I think it's important to remember that um, we come to Jesus broken, we come wounded, we come sick, to be mended, to be healed, to be rescued, <laughs> empty to be filled. In His name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The only name where salvation comes. That's right. Then we departed with joy, unspeakable joy, and overwhelming, overflowing well. I keep saying that wrong. Overflowing well, my no tongue can tell. Joy, unspeakable joy, it rises in my soul and never lets me go. Joy to the world. Mm, joy to the world. And as we remember, we, you know, we're kicking off the Christmas season. We are, um, this is the time of year where there are many great distractions uh, to take our focus away from Christ. But this is his season. You know, we, we, we take this time to remember the greatest gift of all, the gift of Jesus Christ, freely given so that all who would believe can have eternal life. And it is, we come to him just as we are, and in his name we are saved. And because of that, there is joy in the world, that unspeakable joy that comes from Christ alone and leads us to our happy day. Amen. Amen. Ah, uh, well, um, as we as we wrap up, we just ask that you remember what uh, what's going on in the church. Um, mm-hmm. Make sure to check out our Giving Tuesday. We encourage you tomorrow. Uh, we've had Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and now tomorrow Giving, Giving Tuesday. Tuesday. And so we ask that you would remember us on Giving Tuesday and remember the missions that we support, the ministries that we support here at First Baptist, um, and. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Amen. All right. God bless. Y'all take care.